Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our Intermediate Core Data video tutorial series. In this conclusion video, we'll review the things we've learned about Core Data over these past five videos. I'll also point you to some other resources and topics as you go off and learn more about the pieces of Core Data on your own. One goal of this series is to give you a peek under the covers of Core Data. By seeing how pieces of the Core Data stack are assembled, you should be in a good position to continue reading and learning about core data internals. You've already used lightweight migrations, which are fully automated, but by learning about mapping models and NS entity migration policy subclasses, you can understand the underlying process of how core data moves from one model version to another. We overrode the method for phase one of the migration process. You can override any of the other phases as well. There's also the problem of non-sequential migrations. For example, if the user skips a version and you need to migrate from version one to version three. In the book, Core Data by Tutorials, there's a chapter on migrations that covers how to perform these sequential migrations. In this case, to migrate from one to two and then immediately perform two to three. Another goal of this series is to go beyond the basics. Rather than just store strings, you can now store arbitrary data, as well as common Cocoa objects such as images and colors using transformable attributes. And instead of a single managed object context, you've seen some examples of what to do with multiple contexts. As previously mentioned, with NS coding and NS value transformer, you can store just about anything, including your own custom data types in core data. And in our quest for responsive apps, there are many more uses for private queues to keep tasks off the main queue. Along with going beyond the basics, I hope you've also gotten a taste of how much Core Data handles for you. For example, seeing how much you can do with mapping models makes you appreciate lightweight migrations. Similarly, seeing fetched results controllers makes accessing data and grouping by section a breeze and then you can remove a lot of code you would have written around manually filtering and grouping. There are also third-party wrappers, such as Magical Record, that provide a nicer interface to core data. But I think it's important to understand core data before you use these things. You don't want your underlying data store to be too much of a black box that you don't actually understand. That's it for this conclusion video and this video tutorial series. I hope you've gotten a closer look at core data with some more complex topics here and are ready to give them a try in your own apps. Core data is such a broad topic and I encourage you to search around the web and Apple's documentation for all the details and of course to continue to experiment on your own. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial series. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.